Hello, Q kids! Oh, it's great to see you guys back again this week. I am so excited to join with you guys for Q kids. I hope that we have a great time learning about Jesus today. Parents, as always, we hope you stick around because this is a great way for you to build into the faith of your children. So there are opportunities for the whole family to get together and say, read the Bible together. So let's all worship together as a family. Now, you guys uh, know that we need three different things for Q Kids, right? We need a Bible, a journal, and something to write or draw with. Some of you might have already gotten those things together, but some of you might be here for the first time and didn't know you needed a Bible, a journal, and something to write or draw with. So go find one in the house. It's okay. We're not gonna, uh, you're not going to miss much if you go and, and get it right now. So while the people are going out and searching for their Bible journal and something to write or draw with, the rest of us are going to have just a little bit of fun. Now, you guys might notice <gasps> I'm in a different place. Normally I'm in one place, but the background looks all different. Can you guys guess where I am? Those of you who were around before the pandemic and were being and were in the church with us might know. That's right. I'm in the church building in my office. I'm back. It's so good. Now you guys of course might be saying, "Oh, I want to be in the church building too." I know. I know, I know, I know. So I, hopefully, God will show his great power in uh, getting rid of this pandemic very soon. But until then, we're not all able to be here. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys that, uh, get you guys a little bit of a taste of, of what we're going to look forward to when we're back together. Now, I want to show you something just to get you guys a little bit like hopeful for when we get back together again. I know it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit, it might be a little tough to wait. But one thing that you guys... I think some of you may not be able, might not have met before. Something you may not have met before in my office is... <laughs> Do you guys see the size of this thing? It is so huge. This is my dinosaur stuffy. He helps protect me from all the things that might be scary. Now, he is super awesome and I don't think many of you knew that he was in my office. So I'm telling you the secret now. So I'm just showing you now so you can look forward to the day when we all get back to the church and then maybe you guys can sneak in my office and see so you can find where he lives. Now we're going to do a little fun thing though. We're going to give a dinosaur roar. I know your parents beside you might going, oh no, don't make them say it, be loud. All right, just this once, just this once. We're going to do one big dinosaur roar, okay? Big dinosaur roar, here we go. One, two, three, Roar! Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think there's a probably not a small chance that some of you guys are going to try to dinosaur roar with me at kids at circle time later today. So, but we'll we'll move on from there. All right. So, I bet a bunch of you have all have come back from getting your Bible journal and something to write or draw with. So now we're going to continue on with our story, and we're in a series. And our series is called The God Who Makes All Things New. And as part of our series, we will remember a particular kind of question during our series. What's that question? That's right. It's the big picture question. That's right. The big picture question. Now, you guys might have memorized it already. We started with the, this, the big picture question last week and we're going to try again. So some of you who might have memorized it already, close your eyes, see if you can say it along with us, but no worries if you haven't. We're going to put it on the screen and we're going to say it together. What will happen when Jesus returns? Jesus will destroy all evil and make all things new. That's right, he will, and oh, we look forward to that day because right now there's all sorts of really bad things that are going on, like this pandemic. And did you know when Jesus returns, there's going to be no pandemics? Oh, we look forward to that time. All right, so this story today is called, oh, let me get it up here. It is called God's Warning to the Seven Churches, and it's from Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. And God, through the, John's vision, remember we talked about John's vision last week, he gave a message, Jesus gave a message to John that John was going to take to seven churches in his time. And it was 
the messages were both an encouragement saying, hey guys, you're doing these awesome things, but he was also saying, hmm, I want you guys to remember these things and do maybe a little better on these other things. So we're going to watch that story. There's a, there's, it might be a little hard to follow, so sorry about that. There are seven different messages, and so the story is going to talk about seven different messages to seven different churches. Let's watch it together. The Apostle John was on the island of Patmos when he had a vision of Jesus. Jesus told John to write down a message for the seven churches in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So that is what John did. To the church in Ephesus, you do not love well like you did when you first believed. Turn back and love like you used to. To the church in Smyrna, you are poor and are suffering but really you are rich. You may face prison or death, but do not be afraid. To the church in Pergamum, you are faithful to me, and you tell others about me even when it is hard, but not everyone in the church is doing the right thing. Some people are living like those who do not believe. Turn away from your sin and turn back to me. To the church in Thyatira, I know about your love faithfulness and service. You do not give up, but there is a wicked woman who teaches things that are not true, and some of you believe her. I will punish her and those who follow her teaching. Many of you do not follow her. Keep believing the truth until I come. To the church in Sardis, people think you are alive, but you are actually dead. You used to have a strong faith, but now you are weak. Wake up! Be ready for my return. Turn from your sin and remember the gospel. To the Church of Philadelphia, you are a small church, but you listen to me and you obey my word. I am coming soon. Be ready and keep believing. To the Church in Laodicea, you are lukewarm, not hot or cold, so you are not good for anything. I will spit you out of my mouth. You think you are rich, but you are actually poor, blind, and naked. Jesus told them to come to him, and he would make you rich. He would make you see, and he would put clothes on them. Jesus said, See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him, and he with me. Jesus will reward every faithful and obedient believer. John wrote, Let anyone who has ears to hear Listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus loves the church. His message to the seven local churches called them to turn away from their sin and remain faithful to Him. We can learn from those churches. Through the church, Jesus helps believers work together to do God's plan. All right, so I hope you had a good time listening to that story, and now we're going to read the story together in our Bibles. Now, the Bible passage today is quite large, and so we don't expect you to necessarily read the entire thing. It's Revelation chapters 2 and chapters 3, and so it's probably unlikely you'll get in four minutes uh, through all of those. So here's my suggestion. Maybe read a few of the letters to the churches. You'll see how it's sectioned out in your Bibles as letters to seven different churches. Um, I would suggest actually making sure that whichever churches you cover, that you get to the last church, the church to Laodicea, which is at the end of chapter three. And the reason being is because in the Bible story video, it made reference to Jesus saying, I stand at the door and knock. And that's actually Revelation 3.20. So hopefully parents or older siblings are able to kind of guide the story reading into only a few passages, because again, it's long. And again, if you would like to read something from the Jesus Storybook Bible, this story actually isn't in the Jesus Storybook Bible. So we actually suggest if you would like to read from the Jesus Storybook Bible, going to page 322 to 324, and that's the story going home. And of course, this is story is about Jesus actually going back into heaven, back when he was alive. But the theme of like Jesus 
uh, be coming to encourage the churches and encouraging the disciples to follow in what he said. That's kind of the theme that is matched in this story. So take that as you will. <laughs> we'll come back afterwards. All right, so we've read a large portion of the Bible and we have also listened to the story, but I want to bring it down to what is the main point. What do we want to remember? We want to remember that Jesus told the churches to stand strong in faith. Now, the one thing I want to point out, and you guys might remember this from the story, is that Jesus said to the churches, listen, I stand at the door and knock. And Jesus is kind of saying that to all of us. He's saying it's almost as if there's this door into our heart. And Jesus wants to come inside to our heart. So I think we all want to have Jesus come into our heart, right? 
So how do we do that? How do we open the door to our heart to Jesus? He's knocking at the door. How do we let him in? Here's what we do. We listen to him. We listen. It, it's, it sounds hard, but it, it, it's not as hard as we might think because we listen to God through reading his Bible, through coming to Q Kids, through praying. We already do a lot of things to actually listen to Jesus. So, and so the message of this story is just to say, keep doing that. And, and if, if it seems like it's too hard, just know that Jesus is here to guide us and to help us. Now, we're going to do a little bit of that in our journaling time as well. But before we do our journals, we always remember our memory verse. You guys might have already tried to memorize it this week, so we're going to put it up on the screen. For those of you who uh, don't yet, uh, have not yet memorized it, and we're going to say it together, okay? He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Revelation 21, 5. That's right. Jesus is making all things new, especially when he comes back. We don't know when. It could be much after we're alive, but Jesus will, and he's going to make everything awesome. So let us go into our journal time now, because remember the story was all about standing strong in Jesus and listening to Jesus. We're going to do a little bit of that in our journals. Now, the wonderful thing about Jesus is he's alive here with us. We don't see him, but just like the wind, it's there, but we just don't see it. And so we get to talk to Jesus, and he gets to kind of talk to us through writing and drawing. And so I want, to, want you to break out your journals, and we are going to either draw or write something in our journals. If you'd like to draw something, here's what I'd like you to draw. Draw seven churches with Jesus standing in the middle. Seven churches with Jesus standing in the middle. Now, if you don't get to drawing all seven, it's fine. You can, maybe you can finish it afterwards. Now, for the older kids, you guys might already know this. I'm going to give you a little hint. Churches aren't just the building. Churches are just the people. Like we, in this pandemic, are demonstrating how we do church even at our home. So if you want to be a little creative with that, you can draw maybe a church as just being like a group of people. Maybe you can draw yourselves at your home as one of the seven churches. Or you can just draw just seven church buildings. That's okay, but I'm just giving you some ideas of how you could be creative about it. Now, if you would like to write something in your journal, please write, what do you think makes a church that Jesus would like? See, Jesus was basically saying, I like these things about these churches. I don't like these things. If we were to be a church that Jesus liked, what would that look like? Anyway, you spend a little bit of time in your journals. And remember, this is a quiet time. We're not talking to our brothers and sisters or anyone. This is just us and Jesus quietly doing our journals. Of course, parents of preschoolers, we, know, we encourage you because quiet is hard for them. You were able to do it vocally with them. We do encourage them. But generally, we want this to be quiet, just us and Jesus. We're going to spend a few minutes in that and we'll come back afterwards.
All right, well, that is all we have for today. I'm so glad that you guys came with us. We are going to pray, though, before we go. So I'd like everyone to fold your hands with me and close your eyes as we pray together. Please say in your minds these words with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for making all things new, and thank you for making us new. Help us to stand strong in faith, just as you encouraged the seven churches back long ago. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys know what time it is. It's time for circle time. Oh, I hope that I see all of your faces on circle time. It'll be really, really great to see you guys. So parents, as you know, it's the same Zoom link as we have sent previously. Go ahead and click that link and we'd love to see you in the Zoom call where we can share prayer requests and uh, share highs and lows of the week. Have that special time with one another just so we can kind of see each other's faces. If you are new to us and you'd like to sign up for that kind of thing in future weeks, go to queensway.org slash qkids and there's a sign up form for that. But have a blessed week and we'll see you guys soon. Bye!